you know, I just love this building. You could just you stand out in that hall and, and you just imagine what it was like filled with people waiting to, to board a train to wherever. Yeah. But uh, a beautiful, beautiful place to uh, be able to do an event like this. So today is the project information session for the uh, N140 station, U District station. We'll talk about it in some detail today. My name is Trevor Tees. I'm the project manager for Hoffman Construction. And because we have a lot of people here, I'd like to just go around the room and uh, do introductions. And uh, starting with you, Dan. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dan Seidel. Uh, I'm representing Platinum Group. We are the DBE Small Business Inclusion uh, Specialist uh, for this project as well as the uh, 850 project. Real happy that you made time to, to be here. Uh, we have a format for introductions, and I'm just going to take us there. And so you guys can just kind of follow that script. Or actually, maybe we don't have it. Did we maybe delete that script? <laughs> so what we're looking for is your name. We're looking for the name of your business. If there's a particular scope or specialty that your organization has, please take a time to, to make note of that so we can know how to best align you. Some of you have actually, if you look on your uh, tags here, some of you actually have name tags with times. Those times correspond with uh, a meeting that you're going to have post this meeting. So in about an hour, we're going to have one on one. So you'll have the opportunity to meet with Trevor as well as uh, uh, Becca and University uh, Mechanical. Um, so again, my name is Dan Seidel. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, again, my organization is Platinum Group. Okay. Jennifer Hoback and with Cell Transit. I'm the diversity program specialist on this project. I'm uh, Mark Hernberg. I'm with Kaufman Engineers, uh, specifically with corrosion control, the scope to work in that. Also, cathodic protection and track testing kind of all falls under that. Hi, I'm Kerry Jenkins. I represent a local company called AutoScan. We're primarily a drafting and 3D modeling services company. Ryan Cordes. I'm with Crystal Soda Blast. We do sandblasting and concrete polish. Dana, I own Damasco. We do concrete socketing. Taylor, if you'll toisting, we do anything crane related, operators, phone men, I'll calm down, up and below. <laughs> I'm Steve Stamless, and with SP Fabrication, we fabricate structural and miscellaneous steel. Jesse Cherry with ST Fabrication. Uh, Buzz Dijarnay with Sundance Electric. Electric. Bonnie Lyon with Exitec. Consulting, we would provide construction management support as well as any structural engineering on the site. My name is Nadine, and I painting and construction company. We do commercial coatings, water repellent, intermessive coatings. Can we cook with one industrial source for a supplier for electric? Hello, my name is Ralph Nevada. I'm president of Diverse America Network, and I'm a big proponent of small and diverse businesses. My purpose to be here is to not only support Dan and his great work that he's doing with, with Hoffman, but also to support those prime contractors that are making an effort to connect with small, diverse businesses. Let me just also say thank you, Buzz, for your service. Tomorrow is Veterans Day, and those like Buzz and anyone else that uh, has served our country. I am very much indebted to you and your families. Thank you for your service. My name is Joe Trejo. I own JT Consulting Services. I'm a professional estimator, scheduler, and um, my hope is to help Dan provide some of my services to some of the uh, um, companies here. My name is Penny with Pennyway Trucking. Um, I have a construction company that has codes in excavation, demolition, material supply, demolition, uh, disposal, and we do recycling of concrete and asphalt. Good afternoon, my name is Steve Spalding. I'm with Puget Sound Steel. We are a woman-owned uh, rebar fabrication company. Good afternoon, I'm also from Coat Flagging. We do traffic control and flagging services for whatever you need. Val Schuller's on, I'm the owner of Coat Flagging. Devin White, project manager for University Mechanical, will be installing all the HVAC plumbing and ventilation equipment. Uh, Brian Taylor, Rebecca Electric. We are the electrical subcontractor. Jennifer Hoback, I'm with Cell Transit. I'm the 
Jolene Jang. I am a video host and street reporter. Ray Glenn with uh, power testing, do power system testing. Victor Valdez, I'm here with Lardy Company. We're a uh, structural, civil, and architectural concrete company. Christopher Gilliam, Steeler Inc. Uh, we are a steel stud manufacturer and drywall supply. Uh, Mark Scott with Steeler Inc. Uh, also steel stud manufacturer and drywall supply. Uh, Dan Dowell, I'm with CH Twin Hill, and the resident engineer on the project. Chad Brown, I'm Sound Transit, uh, construction manager for the Union Street Station project. Uh, my guess is I'm the senior risk manager with Sound Transit. I place the owner control insurance program for this project. Good afternoon, Chris Elwell with Sound Transit. I'm one of the PLA administrators for the uh, agency. Uh, Zachary Pope, I work with Alpha Construction, and I'll be the purchasing agent on this project. Nice. Good, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so you heard that we have, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll reemphasize this later in the presentation, but we do have uh, the OCIP Owner Controlled Insurance Program uh, administrator here for you to ask questions of about that particular program, and also the project labor agreement uh, represented by Chris. Uh, which is, you know, if you're curious about some of the nuances of that, uh, this is a good time to ask that. And of course, University of Mechanical and uh, Becca Electric are ECCM and, and uh, MCCM contractors. Those are negotiated format contracts uh, are here and uh, we'd like to invite you to talk about any uh, sub and supply opportunities with them. So let's move on. So we've dealt with the introductions. Uh, we're gonna talk about the project overview a little bit about GCCM uh, process, if you are not familiar with that. The uh, small business and disadvantaged business enterprise goals for the project. Uh, the bid package to details, how we are breaking up the scope of work and when it's going to be coming out. Uh, a little bit about working with Hoffman. Uh, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary, but just to give you some orientation. Uh, Dan is going to talk a little bit about the Hoffman and uh, uh, EIW Contractor University, basically the training sessions that are documented and available to you on YouTube for small business. And then we got just a general question session that we'll set up at the back uh, for some one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. So the project overview, can everybody see that okay? I'm sorry, that I didn't realize this room didn't have a big screen, but uh, uh, so U District Station, N140, is right in the heart of the University District. It's right across from the University Tower, the old Safeco Tower. And right now, it's a big big hole in the ground. Our contract value all in is about $140 million. And, but our work is not you know, creating the, the excavation or the short excavation. We basically start from that point and work on up through the finishes. So one, one, uh, uh, one label for this, in fact, it is on the drawing, says U District Station Finishes. It's the structural concrete to get us out of the box and get all the um, all the uh, fluff and buff on the station to get it ready for the public. Our construction starts in May of next year. That doesn't seem like very far away to me. Uh, so it's uh, we're we're very excited to be right on the cusp of issuing the the major bid packages uh, for the work. And with those bid packages, we'll establish the final contract value that will be approved by Sound Transit in preparation of starting work in May. Uh, so yet, probably next week, we'll have uh, the bid package up in the street. We're gonna be bidding this in December. I'm sorry, it's just the way it goes. It seems like the holidays are always a bidding crunch, but uh, there's no way to get around it. Our substantial completion of the project is November of 2019, and this uh, station is uh, one of three that, uh, when it opens, will be the last in line to the north link that takes you from uh, the University of Washington Stadium up to Northgate. So it's a 4.3 mile extension, and just talking about north link in general, it's a 4.3 mile extension from UW Station up to uh, Northgate. We're the first station after the uh, Husky Stadium station. Uh, they're expecting 12,000 daily boardings at this station uh, at, when 2030 rolls around. In the tunnel portion of the project, it's elevated after Maple Leaf, but uh, that, from Maple Leaf, it goes underground 
uh, through the Roosevelt Station up on uh, on 65th, and uh, then the U District Station and on down to UW. That's hard to see, but what you're looking at there, it just shows the alignment. Here, here's the, the underground tunnel coming into the south end of the station, and then proceeds on northbound up to uh, Roosevelt. UW Tower sits right there. Another shot kind of showing you a perspective. The uh, red box there is the N140 station. So again, 2017 to 19 is our construction phase. It's, uh, this site is unique in the fact that it is so constrained. We really have virtually no lay down area. Uh, we have very little area for uh, uh, even construction offices. We basically have the whole, a couple of small spots uh, outside of the actual excavation. We've got about half of, uh, of Brooklyn Avenue to work with as a thoroughfare. Uh, half of the station is, or half of Brooklyn is actually undermined by the station. So it, it won't be a full width street again until we restore the surface pavement. Very close proximity to both commercial and residential neighbors. The University Manor Apartments is right across the block from us on the, on the south side. They look into the excavation. And uh, we're going to have multiple integrations with other sound transit contractors as the construction progresses. So as a matter of fact, about six months into the construction, the rail contractor will need to access our site to be able to start uh, getting the tunnels ready for, for rails. And we are the critical path station to completing North. We're the last one to get started. Bulk of the construction is below grade. The station uh, varies anywhere from 75 to 85 feet below grade. In, in, in between completing in November of 2019 and starting work in May of 2017, there's seven interim milestones. And the milestones are contract milestones with Sound Transit that we have to hit to be able to ensure the success of the entire system. So uh, each one of those milestones has a liquidated damages component to it, so it will be really uh, stressing uh, uh, very good schedule management to ensure that we meet each one of those milestones because it's, it's like dominoes. You miss one, the rest go down. We have, uh, you know, I call it relatively high end, uh, but long life finishes in the public areas. San Transit School is, uh, the, these are 100 year life structures. And so it's, it's built that way. And the type of finishes they put in place are representative of that kind of expectation. This station uh, will uh, support a transit-oriented development to be eventually built over the top of it. Same thing with Capitol Hill Station. If you look at Capitol Hill Station and stud, there's not a lot to look at it right, right now, but the whole idea is that there would be other uh, commercial development that's uh, on the above grade portion of that. And as a matter of fact, uh, our, uh, our station is uh, prepared to take up to a 240-foot uh, structure uh, uh, office type construction. And, uh, that is not on the timeline yet, it's just in the planning stages. Uh, so this is kind of a real high level view. Here's the University of Washington Tower, Brooklyn Avenue, where you can see we got half of it shut down because of the station box. Here's University Avenue, the Ave, and then Northeast 45th right here. This is the uh, excavation. I got kind of a blow up here. That's what it looks like. So it's it's that 75 to 85 foot deep hole in the ground. These braces you see that cross the hole uh, will be there until we complete the concrete lid of the station box because those are actually retaining the soil at the top level. There's, they, we're not able to put tiebacks in at the high parts. So those are 42 inch diameter pipes uh, that are in uh, compression crossing the top of the hole. Uh, kind of give you an idea of scale, that's a big Manitowoc crawler crane that's sitting up there that the N125 contractor as there, we're going to have a similar crane in that position. And this is a temporary bridge that forms one-way traffic coming up Brooklyn. They get, are able to make a right turn and exit out towards University Avenue. So that, that bridge was custom built for this project for the N1, under N125's contract. Uh, we have to remove that to complete the station box, but uh, um, it's one of those logistical challenges about this particular project. That's what it looks inside, looks like inside, and you kind of get the idea of the scale of things. So you're really, this is just the, the width of the platform. There's, we're actually standing, when we're taking this photo, on what they call the saddlebags. It's an intermediate level that sits back further to the east on the north and south ends of the station box. 
Uh, but so this is a, oops, this is the, uh, the uh, shoring wall. It's got vertical soldier piles with multiple rows of tiebacks. Uh, and that occurs on both sides and both ends of the station. Let's talk about our social equity objectives and the goals for this project. Small business participation goals, 13% for small business, 8% for disadvantaged business enterprise. We have apprenticeship participation goals of 20% of the total craft hours, of which 33% uh, uh, the goal is to have those women or minority uh, participation. Um, We've got about 23 total bid packages uh, established and pending to go out on the street. The, the range of value of those goes anywhere from $2,000 uh, $2, up to $30 million. So um, there is lots of opportunity. What we have done is we have taken um, our bid packaging plan and looked at uh, each one of the trade disciplines and compared it against the, uh, the project goals and tried to identify where we believe there's higher opportunities than those goals. Because, frankly, some of the packages are, are going to struggle to be able to meet a 13 and 8. So we've, we've identified some opportunity in some of the packages where we think there's a high level of participation. And we'll be publishing what we believe those, um, uh, those possibilities for achievement are in each one of the scopes of work that we publish with the bid packages. So as we mentioned, we've got the 13 and 8. Uh, some of the bid packages are divided into smaller elements, uh, so you can, the, the, that's where we're creating some of that additional opportunity. And sub-tier contracting with prime contractors will be encouraged uh, during the, the bidding process to be able to help the prime subs you know, achieve the goals we're expecting them to hit. So, and as we're out on the, uh, as we're out, as we've advertised the bid packages and they're out on the street, uh, I would encourage you to keep contact with us on uh, who we see as downloaded the drawings and is expecting the bid as primes so that you can you know, get connected with those people. We'll have their contact information. Zachary Pope, uh, who introduced himself earlier, our purchasing uh, agent here in Seattle will be a good resource for you to get you hooked up with who we are aware uh, is looking at these uh, as, uh, these packages. So uh, here we've got a little some some pictures. This is a, a rendering of what the south entry would look like. So we're standing on 43rd, looking to the northeast here. Uh, the 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 slight the site slopes uh, pretty good from north to south. So this is the the low end. Uh, this is the north entry, as you see it from Brooklyn. Uh, the station butts the, on the north side, it butts the old Neptune Theater. So you only have just the facade you get to see there. And that's what it would look like uh, inside uh, that facility. But you're basically entering and going right into an escalator that takes you down to the platform. This is a cross section. So you can see the, the south entry here, the north entry, and everything, all the, the guts and feathers that are it's below grade. And then the future TOD, you can see, would eventually be constructed clear uh, over the top of the box. Basically swallow the head houses. Another cross section. Trains operate down at this level. And another unique part about the station is it kind of offsets as it, as it comes up out of the ground. So you can see here, here's where the trains are down at uh, the lower level. And it comes up a certain you know, a couple levels and then it offsets off to the east. So here's, here's uh, Brooklyn, and here's that part of that station box that sits underneath Brooklyn Avenue right now. So when we're all done, uh, you'll have a station sitting underneath Brooklyn. But, um, but that offset is another consideration and a challenge with this project. Here's the basement platform level. The trains are on both sides of the platform, so it's a center platform type of arrangement. And now let's talk about general project requirements. Well, we've gotten through the the pretty stuff. So uh, the project labor agreement uh, is established. Basically, it's the same for all of the sound transit uh, packages. So there's no changes that are unique to 140. Uh, it is published as part of our, our documents. 20% um, apprenticeship goal. And I think the, the PLA is a great way to be able to achieve that. Uh, and then Chris Elwell is here today to answer any questions you might have with respect to owner-controlled insurance. So 
good thing about owner controlled insurance is it, it, it kind of levels the playing field, uh, particularly for small contractors because you know the insurance requirements for some of these large projects sometimes overwhelm the smaller contractors and are, it, they, it requires for them to get a special policy. So the OCIP, like I said, uh, does tend to level out the playing field. We've talked about our SDBE contracting diversity goals. And then uh, the FTA, uh, Federal Transp Transportation Authority funding, uh, uh, sets forth the federal requirements. So that, that puts us in the Buy America. And Buy America is different from Buy American. And that Buy America, everything must be domestic manufacturer. So even down to conduit fittings, unistrut, nuts, bolts, everything must be domestic manufactured. It's not, not, no foreign stuff allowed, not even from our Canadian or Mexican friend. So the GCCM process, GCCM, for those of you who may not know, is General Contractor Construction Manager. Uh, it's a program that's set forth in the uh, Revised Code of Washington, been around for a long time, more than a, 25 years. Uh, we were selected as the GCCM uh, back in 2014 and with the start of pre-construction. So pre-construction involves scheduling, site logistics planning, construction work planning, budget development. We've gone through a couple iterations of budget development and, and just overall planning for the project. Uh, you know, Sound Transit does it right. They get you on board pretty early for a job that's going to start in 2017. All of the subcontract work Everything, all the, what I would call the, you know, the hammers in the field uh, must be bid out. So we have to put out packages with very specific scopes, we'll talk about that, uh, that we're asking prime subs to, to bid to us that reflects the scope that we've published. It's not like a typical lump sum uh, design bid build delivery where subcontractors may furnish a Here's my scope letter to the general contractor. So this is what I'm going to provide to you. This is different. We tell you what you're going to provide to us. And it, you're not allowed to take exceptions because then your bid would not be apples and apples to any other bids that we might receive. So very important nuance with GCCM. The uh, mechanical and electrical packages for this particular project uh, are, as I mentioned, are part of the mechanical contractor construction manager process or the electrical contractor construction manager process. So we selected those firms based on qualifications and their bid for uh, general conditions, costs, and what they would charge on a fee for the cost of work. They're obligated to uh, request bids just as we do for work that they do not intend to self-perform and to at least get uh, multiple pricing for uh, the commodity items that uh, that they're going to be incorporating into their work. Uh, and then the rest of the work, the labor, et cetera, is negotiated with them. So University of Mechanical and Becca are, are both represented here today. And uh, I think an important opportunity for uh, many of you. So let's talk about the bids themselves. Uh, it's a little bit old fashioned. You can't email the bids, you can't fax the bids. The bids have to be provided to us at our office in a sealed envelope with uh, the bid package uh, name and number clearly identified on the envelope. Our receptionist will stamp your uh, bid in. You know, if it's due at 2 o'clock on December 23rd, you want to make sure that that timestamp is before that uh, date and time. Um, now, obviously, you can mail those bids as long as you're certain they're going to make it to us on time. If you do that, I would highly suggest you call our front desk to confirm that our, your bid has been received. Um, the bids that are over $300,000 by state law must be accompanied by a bid bond. Uh, so uh, bid bond is something you're going to want to order in advance. It's not something you can get usually in 12 or 14 hours. It's, unless you've got a really good relationship with your bonding company, it's going to take a little time. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, bids that are, are submitted, uh, bids are submitted to Hoffman with the exception of one. And that will be for the concrete work. Uh, we intend, I mean, concrete is one of our major specialties. 
So uh, Hoffman Construction, actually our subsidiary Hoffman Structures, will be bidding the concrete work. As a result, that means that Sound Transit will have to manage that part of the bid process. They will advertise it, they will receive the bids, they will open the bids, they will issue the addenda. Tehi Han is with us now, and Tehi will be uh, the individual with Sound Transit will be managing that process. So look for that. That's actually our bid package number two when that, when that comes out. Uh, the openings are in public. By that, we mean that after the, the uh, date and due time, uh, let's say it's 2 o'clock on December 23rd, then immediately following, uh, we will open the bids in the presence uh, of the owner and any subcontractors or bidders that would like to be present uh, to hear those openings. They're recorded, and you're welcome to take away a copy of uh, the bid results as they're recorded uh, on that day. Our policy at Hoffman Construction is any work that's in excess of $50,000 requires a performance and payment bond. And that's not something you have to furnish with your bid documents, but I do want you to be aware of that. Uh, there are minor exceptions. You know, I mean, if I, you know, if it's like a make or break situation, and, uh, you know, especially a small entity that we're uh, trying to help, then they're on a case-by-case -case basis, we can evaluate things like uh, joint checks and uh, um, progress lien waivers. But, Again, it's case by case, I can't promise anything. So here's our uh, preliminary bid package breakdown, and this is bid package one. Uh, there's quite a number of elements. I've got another page here, but it uh, starts off with earthwork and utilities, and that's one where we see a, a, a greater participation potential than 13 and 8, but that's a $4.5 million package. Uh, it's going to include quite a bit of work demo, uh, it's going to include uh, all the the landscaping, the site hardscape, uh, irrigation, you know, we kind of put the kitchen sink in uh, getting the site finishes completed under that package. Masonry is a good package at $900,000. We have exterior stone cladding for about a half million. The structural steel and metal fabrications, six, uh, 6.7 million. Waterproofing on this work is 3.3 uh, million. Roofing, 600,000. Fireproofing, 200,000. Paint and coatings, uh, $700,000. Uh, we'll have architectural metals, big package here, 3.2 million. Gypsum wallboard systems and insulation, uh, over nine. Doors, frames, and hardware, it's a supply only package at 250,000. Finished carpentry, not a big deal here, 5,000, but a good opportunity. Uh, glazing systems, 470,000. 128,000 for the aluminum canopies, 750,000 for coating systems, and I can't remember why I've got two different coating systems, but I'll figure that out. Coiling doors and grills are $287,000. Fire suppression at $2.5 million. Tiling at $746,000. And then uh, continued, we have code signage at $49,000. Now, uh, this is, I've got an error here. The landscaping is now folded into our big package 1A. So that $314,000 is not standalone anymore. Uh, especially, uh, which is the toilet accessories and the, and the like, about $5,000. And then bird control devices. and installation 31,000. So that's bid package one. There will be a bid package three in the future for elevators and escalators, and bid package two will be concrete. Uh, again, I already mentioned the fact that we're going to be self-performing that and that Sound Transit will be managing that process on the concrete. Uh, you know, for under the MCCM and ECCM scopes of work, University of Becca again, we see opportunities in insulation, low voltage controls, test and balance, and site electrical. Okay. We've not only got our temporary electrical, uh, temporary electrical is another opportunity, and uh, we also have to build a new uh, CM office uh, up on, uh, we're going to build that up on Roosevelt and 45th, and that's another temporary electric opportunity. Under our negotiated support services, negotiated support services are are not necessarily uh, items of work that remain when the facility's done. It, it's work that supports the construction. Crane operators, for instance, you know, temporary cranes, uh, you know, shoring, um, uh, you know, temporary erosion sedimentation controls, that kind of thing. That's under our negotiated support services, and those, those are good opportunities for us to directly outreach to uh, small and disadvantaged firms uh, for participation. Yeah, so we have security, flagging, all that kind of thing would be under our negotiated support services. 
Uh, so working with Hoffman, uh, DJC, you know, it's a publication that's been around for, you know, 150 years. Uh, we do put both legal notices and uh, display ads in the DJC for our bid packages. But that's not the place I'd recommend you go look for our bid packages. Uh, if you, uh, there's, there's two things I would highly recommend working with Hoffman. One is to, uh, to complete a subcontractor vendor questionnaire with us. Uh, that questionnaire is going to ask you about your firm, what kind of works, work it is that you do, what kind of scopes, uh, your comfortable range of work and your history of the kind of volume you do, and uh, get your contact information. And then once we have that and we've you know, gone through that form with you, then we're going to put you in our contractor database. And that, that way when you know, we put a package out, SmartBid will automatically send you an invitation. Alternatively, you can always go uh, to our uh, website, HoffmanCorp.com, go to the subcontractor section and see the opportunities that are current. I, to me, that's a lot easier than, than, uh, than waiting for the DJC. And then, you know, the Dodge reports have always been highly inaccurate in pointing you at the kind of scope of work it is we're looking for. So I find those not to be as reliable. Uh, but again, if you go to our website and the package is posted, you can down, you'll get a link to the documents, the specifications, the drawings, the scope of work that we're looking for. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. So you could download all those documents if you've got the file space or, uh, or look at the uh, particular elements that you're interested in. We do, however, uh, send the bid package to the local plan centers and builders exchange. And uh, if you you know, you're the old-fashioned type, you want that hard copy of paper, like I do. Uh, United Repo Graphics uh, has the files on hand, and you can order a set of prints from them. So I mentioned the subcontractor vendor questionnaire that really helps in getting you in our database so that uh, we, it makes it that much easier for us to reach out to you and know and target you for you know, specific scopes of work. And then uh, Dan, I think this is a good time for you to talk about uh, uh, the, the online active professional development series, or maybe, maybe we'll segue to that as I get through this last sure. item here. Sure. But, sure. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, make sure you contact us when these things are out in the street to try to get you hooked up uh, with the prime contractors that we're looking at, uh, looking at some of this work. For instance, the site work, you know, I'm, I'm expecting it's going to be people like you know, Gary Merlino, and it's going to be uh, Mid-Mountain Contractors, and uh, 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 maybe Icon will be looking at it. So, but they're going to need a lot of support uh, to get to those uh, 13 and 8 numbers. So, so EIW. All right. Thank you. Um, and so you know, we are getting close to wrapping up the presentation piece of this, and then we'll get into the one-on-ones. So in a nutshell, we created the Entrepreneurial Institute of Washington specifically for you. We've been working, and, and uh, myself, I've been working in this industry for about 25 years. And over the years, I've seen these mega capital projects, improvement projects, come through our region. And I've seen small participation go through. And I've been fortunate to be working with Hoffman, who has a different commitment a different sincerity when it comes to inclusion. And over the last uh, year and a half, we've been working with EIW board members. I have my vice president, please stand up, Nadine Mismel. And thanks to him and other board members, we developed an, an organization called the Entrepreneurial Institute of Washington. And what it's designed to do is accelerate our participation and the ultimate outcome is inclusion on these contracts. So if you go to this link below, you will find that EIW and uh, Hoffman have actually collaborated in developing a platform on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and notice you see three video cameras around here. These meetings aren't cheap, ladies and gentlemen. But they're designed to empower you and to give you the best opportunity of being successful on these projects. So if you go to EIW uh, Contractor University, you will find that we have estimating the GCCM environment. You'll see in that class, we actually focus on the N-150 project. Our hope is to be able to absorb N-140 in some of these activities and develop some classes very specific for engagement and best practices. 
job order contracting in addition uh, to blueprint reading. These projects have a substantial amount of plans and that's just the plans, forget the specifications. And so we understand that. And so we're trying to streamline that process to make it easier for you to become successful in those projects. And we've brought subject matter experts like Joe, please stand up, who has a strong expertise around construction estimating and scheduling. And so we brought tools like this in order to help you become more successful. Um, and finally, some of the classes, obviously, you see BIM, you see Bluebeam. Some of you notice that Hoffman uses Bluebeam a lot. Well, it helps them become more efficient. So we thought it would be advantageous for you to understand how to use it. So guess what? You go to Contractor University and you'll see a Bluebeam video there. Those cost thousands of dollars to put on those trainings. We gave it to you free of charge. Same situation with doing business with Hoffman. You heard Trevor reference some forms. You've heard him references some processes and best practices as it relates to doing business with Hoffman. There again, you go to YouTube and you'll see that information. So again, that's what our goal is, is to get you to become uh, successful uh, and develop the best practices that the big boys and girls are using. You'll see a couple other projects that we have identified here. Uh, Andrew Powell is a project manager on a $200 million six year project, the Coleman Dock Project. Since you're here, kill two birds, one stone. Tell them about your capabilities. If you find that this opportunity may not be ideal for you, make sure you leave them with the impression that that other project could in fact be the right fit. So I'm hoping that you take advantage of that. And finally, here's another project that we're working on with the Sound Transit. You'll see Hoffman on a lot of these Sound Transit Alliance projects. So if you want to get an experience, you want some good mentorship, seems like this is a good train to jump on, no pun intended. Um, this is a, information, a little bit of information on the ferry project, which is really close by. Most of you have driven a, or have had the pleasure of being on the uh, Coleman Dock Ferry. If you haven't, it's the most beautiful dock that we have, and it's going to be even more beautiful after we get done with it. Um, we also have uh, another uh, scale up from the top, and you can kind of see the different scopes of work, and you can see the volumes of passengers, so how important this is to our transportation system, along with the Sound Transit uh, partner that we're talking about today. And here's another angle. Um, with this project, we have 12% DBE uh, participation goals on that project, and we plan to exceed it. Um, there are some complexities about that project because of the long duration, but we'll talk about that, and we'll, we'll probably be having another event over the next month or two on that one, so it'll give you an opportunity to get some information on that. Um, here is the contact information for our very talented team, and I'm so happy that we had the assistance of Sound Transit. We could not have done this without our partner, Sound Transit, and I would uh, be remiss to not mention Sound Transit actually helped us uh, identify locations to, to give these trainings, so we're real pleased about that. Um, and here's the contacts for both Becca and University. Now, uh, we're going to go right into questions and then we're going to start lining folks up for the one-on-ones. I have to mention to you, I have three appointments set up for VECA and I have none set up for university. And so, this is an opportunity to make sure that if you wanted to meet with the university, make sure you come to me so I can get you on that schedule. Uh, but our first three appointments I have for Hoffman, and I've done some rearranging because not all of the folks at RSVP actually came here. So I've taken some initiative here. I have uh, Nadine uh, scheduled with Trevor at 3. I have Coke Flagging uh, scheduled at 3.05, and I have Excel Tech scheduled at 3.10. Uh, again, I would like some openings for University Mechanical. And for Becca, I have uh, one industrial, Tammy. I believe we have mobile uh, coming up at 310 and Sundancer at 315. Um, any questions? Oh, yeah, so uh, the Mac is what you're saying. We, we have uh, not finalized the contract with Sound Transit. We're in the pre-construction phase. So this is, this is common in the practice. The, the pricing that we get with this bid, uh, uh, bidding uh, effort that we're going through here in the next couple of months 
will be the basis of helping us finally establish our MAC, maximum allowable construction cost that will be approved by Sound Transit, or we're trying to target getting in front of the Sound Transit Board in February. But right now, we're it. So, if, if you are, uh, make sure I understand your question, because I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, if you are put in a situation where you're delayed by, by someone else's uh, lack of effort, right? then you're not responsible for that, right? Okay? Uh, even though you're a third tier to you know, someone else. Uh, we look to the prime uh, to correct whatever it is that is not going right to make an obligation of either schedule or cost. So, okay? The current time you also have indemnification, right? What is that volume? It's, it's in our documents. I can't spit it right off the top, but you'll, you'll see the indemnification requirements in the documents. Yeah. And that, if, if you're third, uh, well, not if you're prime. If you're third, if you're third tier, yes. You, I mean, that's, that's a negotiation that you would have with uh, the next level. So, but at the prime level, I, I can't afford you that opportunity. Okay. It looks like we're going to just talk in general, so we'll give you an opportunity to okay, sure. if there's any clarifications we can get into. So good afternoon. My name is Chris Ello. I'm one of the project labor agreement specialists here at Sound Transit. Uh, this project, as all link by rail projects, is covered by our project labor agreement, which was ori originally negotiated in 1999 and has since been amended uh, six times. Uh, it covers all construction work that's on our project. <coughs> uh, yeah, so all. Um, all contractors have to be, become signatory to the terms and conditions of the project labor agreement through a fully executed letter of assent, which will happen before workforces come onto the project. All workers are drug tested uh, according to the terms of within their labor compliance manual, that's, which is part of the contract. Uh, and all um, work uh, is, uh, all workers are dispatched through the local unions. Non-union uh, contractors are encouraged to uh, participate uh, and uh, are available to uh, uh, join in uh, through the letter of assent. Um, I can answer any specific questions that folks might have. If folks had specific uh, questions that related to the ratios, uh, we have different folks here from iron worker to trucking to painting and mechanical, electrical, so they all have kind of a different framework. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So um, they're, they're, they're all subject to the same um, ratios that we talked about earlier as far as apprenticeship utilization, women and people of color goals. So that, that is a project wide uh, for all crafts. Um, each each uh, craft workers are represented by a different uh, union and uh, would be dispatched uh, through their respective craft uh, unions. So if they were an iron worker coming on the project, they would be dispatched to the iron workers hall if they were a plumber pipe fitter through the uh, plumbers pipe fitters uh, union hall. So, um, but everybody, all the, all the apprentices and such are the same ratio. And what about a certain size company? Some of the companies here uh, may gross over a couple grand, or excuse me, a couple million a year. Some may be under that. Can you tell us a little bit about the size of the company and how that, and some folks may have familiarity with working with the union and some of you may not. So this is a good opportunity to ask the question. Sure. So uh, there is no size standard for opting in or opting out of the PLA. It is mandatory for all subcontractors of all size. Um, Sound Transit does have, uh, there's, there's two PLA specialists, myself and a colleague. We have a manager and another individual that make up a four-person team, and we are available for technical assistance when it comes to, uh, in, in particular, smaller contractors or contractors that are not familiar with working in a unionized environment. Um, we um, have many, many years collectively of experience in the labor relations field. Um, are more than happy to assist any sub or uh, any subcontractor through any issues, labor-related issues that uh, could uh, come up on the projects. 
there, there is a there is a pre-apprenticeship program called Helmets to Hard Hats, where they take returning veterans, put them into apprenticeship programs, and that would give them credit for a pre pre uh, 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 pre-approved apprentice uh, slot. So that would that, that's about the only veteran uh, program that's I'm aware of. Yeah. So as an open shop, do we so we don't need to get a one-time agreement through a union. No. Do our guys need to still be union members? No, they don't. They don't need to join the union. They do need to be dispatched <coughs> through the union, and and um, there there is a very very big distinction between the two. They don't have to join and become members of the union, okay. um, but for the for the terms of this project, so from the from the day they set foot on the project to the day they leave this project, they would be covered by the PLA and represented by that union. But they're not. They don't have to join. They don't have to become members, and you don't have to sign the one job agreement. Signing the letter of assent is all you need to do. The PLA is something that the Sound Transit Board has adopted as policy for the agency and for the construction of one flight rail. So, um, you know, it's it's something that the board has has debated and weighed on, and, and this is with this, this is the decision that was made. So, I understand, I understand, yeah. I understand how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So we're not going to work on a site and just be supplying materials to it. So, uh, in pure supply form, no. Um, so, if it's stockpiling, so if it's you know like uh, rock aggregate, if it's stockpiling, then absolutely not. Okay. But if it's just if it's delivering supplies, no. Okay, great. Got another question back here. Okay, now uh, on the CWA, and obviously this is a it's really a difficult one because you know the the politicians made the decisions, um, and it was. Um, it was a balance. Um, what they wanted to do was they wanted to include local citizens in the construction of these projects. And they saw that, that the tool of these PLAs was one way that they could do that, and that was through the labor side. They weren't thinking about the impact on the small business, and unfortunately that's, that's one of the challenges that we've been working through. However, we are developing language, and that's why there's been five amendments um, is we're trying to develop language that would be more inclusive to all of our organizations. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, those of you in the, that are in the back of the room, I'm going to ask that you come forward because we're going to start the one-on-ones. Um, if you are not scheduled to have a one-on-one, please come see me so we can get that coordinated.